God bless you and welcome to Living Devotions. Welcome. We're excited to be here. <laughs> yes, we are. And listen, this is historic. You should be calling everyone and really saving this program because not only for the past two weeks, you've had two popes for Living Devotions, <laughs> but on this final episode, Pastor Audrey is with me in the Prophet's Cove, <laughs> teaching the word, all right? So Amen. She, Amen. this is not unfamiliar territory for her because whenever I need her soprano voice and I'm working on music, I say, you know, I say, Audrey, I'll say, Pastor, <laughs> I say, Audrey, come here. And she comes running when the kids are small, I will call them and, and, and teach them the parts and what have you. But here we are. This is his story. Because we are teaching together from the Prophet's Cove. That this might be a series by itself, Pastor. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we need to get started because we have a lot to unpeel and dismantle just to build you up. And we have been so excited about this series. Amen. And we just thank God because I pray that it's really been blessing people's lives. Yes. I believe it has, Bishop. I believe that too. I, yes. I believe that your your life is better because you've been following this teaching. It's a three part series, and we're just excited about all the uh, information, the guidance, mm -hmm. the scriptures, the points that the Spirit of the Lord have given us to give you. Amen. Amen. And that's what makes it all makes you a better person and makes this all worthwhile. Absolutely. So we are excited. I mean, we've been having good old church. So we've been talking about um, from a very, very hot topic as far as I'm concerned. And we've been dealing with some issues concerning your life, concerning everything that we've been dealing with. And our topic has been living your life authentically, yes, living yes. your life authentically, being real with it. it you know, so we it. talked about relationship in week one. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about health, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. heart health on, on week two. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about heritage. All right. Uh oh, here. Favorite subject. Oh, Lord. Favorite subject. I might I'm gonna, not need too much help on this. I'm going to chime in if I can. <laughs> if not, I'm going to let them have it. I'm sure pastor will not disappoint us. Let's have a word of prayer. We've already used up a lot of time. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless you for another opportunity that Pastor Audrey and I have you, as Lord. ordained by you, thank you Lord God. to minister and to pour into your people. Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Father, I thank you for my help meet. I thank you for my soul thank mate. You, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for how you have allowed both of our families to give birth to each of us you, so that we, uh, Pastor and I can be placed together as co-laborers in the gospel, yes, as friends, Thank you, Lord. as as people that love each other from the core of our very hearts. You, and we thank you, Lord, for all that you do in giving us, our, in birthing our spiritual, our natural children into birthing our spiritual yes, children. Yes, so, Lord. Lord, we give you glory. We pray that these words will be anointed and that the people that are listening will be edified and made better because of your word. Now, Father, let your word go forth without controversy. But let it go forth with, with power yes, and Lord. understanding, clarity and anointing. Yes, In yes, Jesus' Lord. name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We had to pray some serious things there because this may really stir up some mess. Wow. But it's okay. a good thing. Okay. So we're talking about heritage and our topic will simply be discovering your misplaced identity. Wow. Discovering wow. your misplaced identity. That's good. That's Pastor, good. I really wanted to go somewhere else with this. I mean, I had my scripture. I didn't have my topic for weeks. Mm -hmm. I didn't have my topic. I had my points. I knew okay. what I need to talk okay. about, but I did not have my topic. I mean, I had so many things. If I showed you my notes right now, you would see so many different topics. So finally, I settled on one thing, came right here into the prophet, into the prophet's cove, and the Holy Ghost just, boom. Highlighted where I need to go, but I will be working my original scripture. <laughs> Amen. So we're talking about discovering your misplaced identity. Pastor, this is important for the believer yes. because we are, uh, uh, we are clothed, if we will, uh, enshrouded by um, Christianity that we take on every custom, every norm, mm -hmm. every ideology, even mm -hmm. uh, every denominational teaching, mm -hmm. uh, the the wardrobe, the outfits, mm -hmm. the cler the clerical attire. We do everything really based upon the European Christian Church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True, 
I believe that. I believe that. And in doing so, we may even find ourselves denying who we really who are. We, say it louder, Pastor. That's it. Denying who we really are. Who we really are. And it doesn't mean that uh, uh, Christianity from a European-based ideology is um, not correct, but there's some things there that we have to be cautious of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because uh, we have some of our brothers and sisters of other faiths mm -hmm. that feel like because we are black, mm -hmm. and I want to use that term, you know, normally I would use African American, yeah. but we're going to look at that differently today. Um, but because we are black, people of color, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about that, that, um, you know, we, we shouldn't stray away from that heritage uh, that makes us who we are. I mean, sure. I mean, it, it's a fact. I mean, you can look at us. We're we're not Caucasian. We're not Asian. And I know we all claim <laughs> to, be to be Native American. <laughs> you know, we all claim that. Or if your name is Pope and, and Cromwell's your father, then you claim to be, uh, you know, from the islands. <laughs> But uh, for some reason that, you know, the, those southern states still run deep in all of our roots. <laughs> so let's get into this, because I think there's enough in the in the lesson itself that will cause room for discussion. Sure. So we want to look. I want to I'm not going to read everything from this passage, but in Exodus chapter two, verses two through ten. I'm not going to read all of that because the scripture I want to work from is actually in another book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I didn't say, I didn't want to say it because I don't want people running ahead mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. But in Exodus chapter two, we find the story of Moses and we find out that Moses um, was born at a time when uh, the, the uh, people of God, when the Israelites needed a deliverer, yes. they were in bondage. And I don't have time to explain the difference between bondage and slavery. Mm -hmm. All right. So they were uh, in bondage and might not really have been slaves. And uh, one scripture I'll give you is right here in Exodus, where Pharaoh's daughter, after they see the baby Moses, who was not named at that time. True. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. trying to give so much theology, but I have right, to. Right, right, right. Um, when she saw him in the basket uh, and she took the baby and they noticed he was a Hebrew baby. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to believe that they noticed he was a Hebrew baby because our modern day thinking is that Hebrews were Caucasian people from Europe. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what these um, Egyptians uh, who saw this Hebrew child mm -hmm. saw someone close in complexion. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes, I believe they, that. They saw someone close in complexion. Otherwise, why would Pharaoh's daughter take this child as her son? True. True. Now, I was talking about slavery. So the the, uh, the Bible teaches us here in Exodus chapter two that when uh, uh, the uh, Pharaoh's daughter's servant mm -hmm. uh, said, "Shall I bring the baby over to you?" and she said, "Yeah." And when they opened it up, they saw it was a it was a right. Hebrew a baby boy. Right. Now, the reason why I say Hebrew was not just because of skin complexion, but the baby was more than likely wrapped in Hebrew clothing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You know, the mother had something that was Hebrew, mm -hmm. or at least. These rich Egyptian women of royalty mm -hmm. noticed immediately that whatever this babe was wrapped in was the poor people's clothing. True, uh -oh. true. Something uh -oh. that identified, something that identified what the um, uh, true nature of the child. Was. Of course, yeah. of course. So there was the possibility of complexion, true. skin tone, and as well as what the baby was wrapped in. Clothing. Was clothed yes. in. Well, it was yes. just, you know, some yeah, rags and just, sw yeah. you know, some swallowing clothes, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but I wanted to point out, we was talking about uh, whether the uh, Israelites were enslaved or whether they were just in what the Europeans use as indentured servants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Bible says that uh, Pharaoh's daughter, uh, her, her servant, her maid servant said, well, should I get one of the Hebrew women to basically wean him and mm -hmm. raise him? Mm -hmm. Because I believe Moses was a newborn and, mm -hmm. and he need to be weaned for at least three months. Mm -hmm. At least that's what Pharaoh's daughter mm -hmm. um, made as the mandate. Mm -hmm. All right. So when we have that, we find out that Pharaoh's daughter told Miriam, which uh, told uh, Moses' mother, mm -hmm. because Miriam, his sister, was there in the bulrushes trying to guide him and making mm -hmm. sure that um, the baby was safe because it's the Nile River. Right. There's crocodiles and everything else. Right. Besides mm -hmm. the shipping traffic. Mm -hmm. But in your King James, the Bible clearly says that uh, the Pharaoh's daughter told the mother, raise him for three months and I will pay you. Mm -hmm. You don't pay slaves. 
true. You don't pay slaves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, slaves, you do it just because right. I said so. Right. I'm the master. You're the slave. You have mm -hmm. no other choice. Mm -hmm. And then there's other things, but we can unpack that. Right, right. Uh, and it's all right there in the book of Exodus. We can unpack that even when Moses encounters God at the burning bush. Yes. You know, ne next thing Aaron appears. Hold up. The burning bush was not there in Egypt. Right. It was in Midian. Right. So how's Aaron right. way out there in Midian? Sure. So all, so we're getting off course, but we're, listen. We're laying the foundation. We're laying the foundation. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to apologize for being a theologian. There's a purpose and a reason mm -hmm. behind the doctrine of divinity degree. Right. Amen. Right. All right. And we're not tooting our own horn. It's just that I'm not one of those preachers that's preaching, you know, he's going to fix it and I ain't being called a bishop or a doctor. Come, You don't need a doctor's degree to tell folks he's going to fix it. Mm -hmm. Exhorters are doing a great job mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Evangelists are doing a tremendous job with that. Yeah. So, you know, pastors, bishops, let's take it up. Let's feed the people. Yes. I'm getting off track. Yes. Isn't that what God said in Jeremiah? He will give you pastors according to his heart, which will feed you. Oh, my God. My God. So we find that there in Exodus chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. We definitely want you to read that on your own. I do want to also track your attention to Acts chapter 7. It is the same story being recounted uh, shortly by the early church, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the early church in Acts chapter seven and verse number 20. And the Bible reads it this way, in which time Moses was born and was uh, exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. Mm -hmm. Verse 21. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. Pastor, you don't know the stuff I can say mm -hmm, right there. Mm -hmm. it, it has to deal with the, the African slaves being brought to America and all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And hopefully we won't be distracted or mm -hmm. sidetracked and go there. We have to say some things for the midweek talk back. Uh, verse 22. Are you good, Pastor? Yes. Verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Verse 23, and I'm going to read that in part. And it says, and when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart. Mm -hmm. The scripture continues by saying, to visit his brethren. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. To visit his brethren. Mm -hmm. And it didn't call, say the uh, Egyptians, it said the children of Israel. Israel. Yes. So the first thing we need to talk about, there's our foundation. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to work, Pastor. Mm -hmm. The first thing I need to talk about and share with you, my first, and there's three points. So hang on in here. We'll try to do this as quick as we can, but we do not want to leave anything out. We need to discuss when talking about black ethnicity in America, mm -hmm. when talking about the role of the black American, even in Christianity, mm -hmm. we need to talk about America's greatest sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. America's greatest sin. Pastor, it was no extra effort for, for me to hear the spirit of God with these points for this message. Amen. God. America's greatest sin. And I know many of us, we will say, well, why would you be a black and Christian? Why would you be black? Number one and Christian number two and vote democratic. Why will you be black and Christian and not vote Republican? You know, you wear your MAGA hats. And, and I know we're dating this now by referencing this. But we have to remember something that, number one, God is not Republican nor Democrat. That's right. That's right. He is not conservative nor liberal. He is not left nor right. All of those political terms mm -hmm. and, 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 and lingo that we use. God is not against one race in support of another race. That's right. I'm trying to be nice. God is about his agenda. He's about his agenda. And we are created, whatever hue of color we are, we are created to fulfill his agenda. We are co laborers of the gospel, regardless of our race, creed, our race, or our religious denominations and affiliations. We are created to be co laborers together in the gospel. We are to have dominion over the earth, not a particular race. Now, and that's any race. If you're black, said that's right, the original man. Or if you're Caucasian, said, well, we're the smartest. The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. We are all of the same blood, the Bible. That's it. That's it. Right here. Right here. It teaches us we're all of the same blood. 
We're all of the same, from the same creator. What else do we need to say? It. Isn't there something, regardless of your skin complexion, mm -hmm. we all, listen, pastor, I've seen Caucasian people that, that favor, have the features of a black person. Absolutely. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. Which I've seen people from another continent look like folks from another continent. That lets you know right there that God created original man. Mm -hmm. That even after the flood, that humankind had to be revived or rebirthed mm -hmm. through eight people. Mm -hmm. So yes. so we may not all look like Adam and Eve now, mm -hmm. but we all have to look like Noah, his wife, and, his wife, and their three sons and their three daughters, right, right. daughters-in-law. I agree. Oh, somebody yes. better know this, this is good word. This is good teaching. Amen. So we cannot go around saying, you know, it's this, that, or the other. America's greatest sin. I'm here to tell you now, and I, I'm going. You're going to I, listen. We're going to differ. We're going to differ from the Christian standpoint, the liberal standpoint. You will say America's greatest sin is abortion, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, America's greatest sin is racism, mm -hmm. the evil of racism. I, I need to hear my grandmother saying, amen, Walls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I, I know other people will say, oh, no, because, and I've had someone say to me, well, how would you vote for this person? Or why would you vote that way when, when they believe in abortion? Okay, uh, that's one thing we may I may disagree with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean I'm going to agree with another agenda that overlooks people. And, and 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 supports classism, which means if you don't have what we have, you don't become like us. True. You don't receive the same benefits mm -hmm. and privilege. Oh, we're going to dig into this real good. You need to hang in here. I think you need to call somebody right now and say, you might want to check this one out. Yes. All right. So America's greatest sin from Dr. Pope is racism and not abortion. I know the Bible says the nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. But that sin of forgetting God is not just abortion. And the same voices, mm -hmm. this is where I'm trying to go, from the pulpits of, from American churches that speak out and preach out against abortion, uh, 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 Planned Parenthood, am I saying that? Mm -hmm. And all of that, we understand that. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't it be so encouraging to hear those same voices speak out just as strong, mm -hmm. uh-oh, just as bold, present just as much scripture against racism. True, absolutely. And absolutely. not just say here and there, absolutely. well, you know, we've addressed that and spoke out boldly mm -hmm. against it. How many times? Mm -hmm. Because this is a sin, curse, affliction mm -hmm. upon the United States. And if the church does not speak out against it, mm -hmm. then it becomes an, a, 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 an indictment mm -hmm. against the church, mm -hmm. which means even the church will have to stand in judgment to God. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Bishop, that was a good point. Uh -huh. um, because I think that uh, what people don't look at is that abortion and racism kind of run hand in hand. The woman who at the core of Planned Parenthood, her whole agenda was to stop black babies Look from being that. born, that? from mm -hmm. limiting the amount of black babies that could be born. Right. That's an atrocity by itself. Mm -hmm. But then the two of them together, racism and abortion, you know what I'm saying? And what people don't realize, you know what I'm saying, where we're kind of feeding into that whole agenda is that abortion is highest among African-American right. race. That's right. So mm -hmm. that, that's very good. So so then the purpose of that, the, the original intent, mm -hmm. the original mm -hmm. intent was to stop the deliverers yes, from absolutely. being birthed. Absolutely. The same thing that we see in Exodus. Absolutely. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're not, we're not saying that it's right. No, you know, abortion would have not. you. Absolutely but what, not. what my point is, so mm -hmm. just for clarity's sake, my point is how are we ready to march about abortion and say very little about racism. Absolutely, absolutely. Pastor, uh, I was in, I, I, I was watching a program on Christian television some time ago, a few years back, and it was a white minister, and they, and the topic was about racism. Mm -hmm. And the white minister was saying he was at a pastor's conference the night when President Barack Obama won the election. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it hit the news, he was at a Christian pastor's conference mm -hmm. and said when the news came to their gathering mm -hmm. in that ballroom, that the white pastors, I hate to say it this way, just began to weep and cry. Wow. 
Are we for real? Wow, wow. Because a, a black man wow. won the presidency? Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, you know. And then Bishop, I think a lot a lot of times they want to put it behind their um, wholehearted beliefs and their agenda. But the fact of the matter is they never believed that a black man would be elected president. It's coming up in the lesson, yes. Pastor. It's coming yes. up in the lesson. You know All right, let's look at this. Black history in the United States, we don't need just a month. That's it. Because black history is American history. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those generations of slaves in the South, and we know every black citizen in the United States from the 1600s, 1700s, and 1800s were not slaves, but the majority were. Mm -hmm. All right. The majority definitely were. Millions were. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I believe it was up to 4 million. I believe if my numbers might be incorrect. But the thing is... We cannot overlook the fact that it was the black person that helped build this nation. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it took them a long time before they allowed the black person to help defend this nation. Absolutely. This country was built on the backs of slaves. Oh, you free cannot, labor. You free labor. Deny it. Exactly. I don't want people to think we're not teaching them something. Oh, no, absolutely. This is not a vet session. No, absolutely. We really want you to learn, and we have plenty of scripture to back this up so we must understand that black history is more than the month of february Absolutely. is more than just the, the you know people say that it's the shortest month listen whether it's the shortest month or the longest month your black history is throughout the year because it should be a part of american history and it's our history it's our, we don't have yes. asian american month that's right we don't right. Have, think about it's it true. we don't have italian american it's month true. history true. month True. We don't have German American History Month. True. True. It goes on and on. But so we and I know why we needed it for the black people to have connection. Exactly. I know why we needed it to educate mm -hmm. the other races that make up the melting pot, mm -hmm. the melting pot of the American uh civilization or population. I understand that. But at this point, it should already be in the textbooks. Absolutely. It's our history. It shall already be in the textbooks mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. every, every school in the United States, parochial, private, or public. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. It shall already, uh, I, I guess the, the charter schools fit near somewhere. It shall already be on the curriculum because it's a, why are we learning about the kings in England? Why are we learning about Charlemagne? Mm -hmm. Why are we learning about Greek history? We learn about ancient Rome, mm -hmm. but then we have to have a black history month. Mm -hmm. No, we are a part of American history. Absolutely. And because the, the very American revolution the first casualty that history teaches us was a black man by the name of Crispus Attucks. See? See? Hello? Right there in Boston. Right. Bean Town. Caucasian territory. I mean, th just think about it. So we are, black history is a part of American history. Let's keep this thing rolling. Listen, I want to talk about Christian conservatism in the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, whether are you left or right and the extreme this and extreme that. We must be careful, my, my dear brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. we must be careful not to become so focused or driven to be rich and live privileged that we forget about the poor. True. Watch this. Watch this. In, in the gospel of Luke chapter four and verse 18, Jesus begins his public ministry and he comes out of the wilderness after being baptized. Mm -hmm. He goes into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. After coming out of the wilderness successfully, mm -hmm. overcoming Satan's three temptations, coming out the wilderness, Jesus says, I'm, I'm going to read it for you, Pastor. I want to read it for our listeners. In Luke chapter 4 and verse number 18, the Bible says that Jesus came out of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And verse 18, the first words... Mm -hmm. of the freshly anointed Savior mm -hmm. is recorded for us. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Watch this. Because he hath anointed me, the first thing on his agenda, to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. 
So all the teaching about being rich and, and success and riches and money coming and, 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 and I have all these airplanes and a minister like me needs to fly like that. I can't fly commercial. You know, all of the things that we hear, you know, the, well, the people give and that's why I have so many acres of land on the water and blah, blah, blah. All of that. Listen, the Lord blesses you that way. No one's mad but the devil. Right. But let us remember, everybody... It's not, not called to be rich. That's right. And it's easy for the leader to be rich when people are tithing into the leader. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. So it's come on, this is common sense things. Mm -hmm. And it is biblical. Absolutely. I wish our church <laughs> I wish our church applied it that way. But listen at this. The first thing Jesus did, his first anointed assignment. Mm -hmm. Did you preachers hear that? His first anointed assignment was to the poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why, well, how can you be black and vote democratic? They don't do nothing for you as black. They mock you. They laugh at you. They keep you in bondage. Is that a fact? Well, there are some people that rather have social assistance mm -hmm. than to have national prejudice and hatred against them. True. I don't let the church say amen. Mm -hmm. We could have stopped right there. We could stop. I need to. I need to cool off. <laughs> we could stop right there. Mm -hmm. Listen, Pastor, I want to share this. Daniel Hirschman, he's associate professor of psych of sociology. Mm -hmm. Daniel Hirschman, associate professor of sociology at Brown University, mm -hmm. made this statement. If you're used to privilege. Equality feels like oppression. Wow. Wow. When you are used to privilege, wow. equality wow. feels like oppression. Wow. And, and historically, mm -hmm. that's what happened when they came out with all the different laws to give uh, people of color a chance to work mm -hmm. and, and, and qualify for jobs. Mm -hmm. Help me, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Qualify for jobs. It qualify for places to live outside of the urban ghettos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You heard it called equal opportunity employment. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so all of these things, if you're used to privilege, this professor of sociology said, equality feels like wow. oppression. Wow. So let's look at some false, some false senses, mm -hmm. some false senses of reality that we struggle with mm -hmm. here in the United States in particular. Let's see. We're the only people, I want you to hear this. We're the only people whose name is a trend. True. <laughs> True. We're the only, now listen, y'all know this is my topic. I'm locked and loaded. We're the only people whose name is a trend. True. And you know what a trend is? A trend is simply defined as a passing form of fancy, a passing form of fancy. In other words, it's here today, it's going tomorrow. Uh, this pattern is in today, is out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, that style is in today, is out tomorrow. We laugh how the young people, uh, they pay uh, hundreds of dollars for things that our parents paid $10 for True. Yep. to clothe us. Yep. The sneakers we wore, the jeans we wore. Yep. Now they go around making holes. They selling jeans top dollar. Hundreds of dollars with holes in it mm -hmm. when we were laughed at as kids. If our jeans had clothes. holes in them. That's right. That's right. It was when you were poor, that's what that's how you dressed. You had no choice sometimes. So we but now but look who's really in bondage? Sure. Who's really who's really still on the slave? Who's really giving up or yielding to the master? Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about the master referring to God with a capital N. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about false sense of reality. We're, we're the only people, as we said, whose name is a trend. And I will break this down for you. But we have to be proud of our color. We're more than a trend. We're more than a hashtag. We must be proud of our color and we must be proud of our skin. Absolutely. God made no mistake when he created us. So let's look at what we call the trend. Number one, we were called when we were brought to the America, we were called Negro. Mm -hmm. Well, technically, Negro is just a Spanish word for black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Spanish, when you say black, you say Negro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I may not say it with a Spanish accent, Negro. but it's a fact. Negro. 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 <laughs> 
Don't get us started. We speak in tongues, but Spanish isn't one of them. All right. But Negro is just a Spanish word for black. But black folks accepted that. Then we left Negro and went to color. And color is, listen, what we have to understand about saying people are colored. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Everyone is colored. <laughs> Everyone in your crayon box, the white crayon is a color. The when you want to paint a wall white, you don't say, "Oh no, no, take, take me to the section that that that, that doesn't have color." Right. No, white is a color. And the people we call white people, they're not white. Mm -hmm. That is not yeah, white. Right. <laughs> I can't. That is not white. So we go from Negro, which is simply the Spanish word for black, to being called color. And we accept these labels. Mm -hmm. We accept these names. We accept these trends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we say, I'm color. I'm not a Negro. I'm color. Well, everyone is color. Right. What color are, are you ready for this? And if you go with this saying that, that some folks say, if you just have one ounce of, of, of African blood in you, then you are black. Mm -hmm. If you have one ounce, they mm -hmm. say, so they don't care about if your mother and father are white. If you have one ounce of black blood, well, we're here to tell you right now, mm -hmm. everybody better call Africa, Mother Africa, because the oldest skeletons found have been found on the African continent. Mm -hmm. Scientists, mm -hmm. anthropologists, they all agree that, that the oldest, the original man mm -hmm. was African. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to bust no one's bubble, but we are trying to dismantle ignorance. Mm -hmm. All right. So we go from color, Negro word for a uh, black. We go from black. We go to, I mean, from Negro, ne uh, Spanish word for black. Then we go to color, which everyone is color. I don't understand that. So it's not a shame when you hold, uh, it's a shame when we hold color against each other. Right. You can't play with my kid because we're white and you're not. You can't play with my kid because we're Asian and you're not. Can't I can't live next door to you because you're black and I'm not. Now, listen, we are all different hues mm -hmm. of God's infinite, immutable mm -hmm. mind and creativity and knowledge that is far surpassing than ours. God, the, the crayons, the colors mm -hmm. all serve purpose. And all of us are colored. And that, my dear white, great pastor, that is a fact. That's awesome. Yes, it is. <laughs> There's another one. We talk about Negro. We talk about color. Then we said, well, I'm black. And the 60s came along and we said, I'm black and I'm proud. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that we have been brainwashed to believe that black is wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look in the dictionary, and when you look up, look, look up the definition for black, you see so many evil and negative Pretty connotations nice. to the word black. That's but when you look true. at the word white, you will see the words like purity, good, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Are really mm -hmm. then what's 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 yellow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's red? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's brown? I mean, mm -hmm. come on, mm -hmm. what's beige? Because no one is white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So we've been brainwashed to think that black is wrong, that black is evil. But thank God for this, the blacks in the 60s that said, I'm tired of being called colored. I'm black and I'm proud. Yes. I don't mean to sound like I'm a James Brown fan, but James Brown came out with the saying and he said, say it loud. Oh, y'all see my fist still up? <laughs> you can see I'm a child of the 60s, but you see my fist still up. You can thank James Brown. And hopefully he made it to heaven. We have doubts. But anyway, <laughs> James Brown oh said, say it loud. Get ready. Hold your ears, pastor. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud, y'all. Say it loud. It's time for you to discover your misplaced identity. Then finally, pastor, here we are now. And I've even used this term and thought I was be correct when I was only being political politically correct. Mm -hmm. But now we say we are African American. Mm -hmm. The only problem with that, no, we are pure Americans. Mm -hmm. We are born in America. Mm -hmm. Your parents were born in America. I don't care who was a slave in your history. They were slaves here in America. And you have to really go way back mm -hmm. to find the original African that became your family ancestor. True. 
And then the intermingling and the separation of families uh -huh. and, 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 and slave owners sleeping with black women. And don't forget this. There were black men used as studs to impregnate black women. Uh -huh. If you were, if he was a big man and tall, then that would mean he could produce a big, better stock. Uh, a better stock, a better of, stock of seed of, of a child. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So as black folks, we are all intermingled. So you know what? We don't call the Asian Asian American. Mm -hmm. We call the Native Native American because they were here mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. They were here before America's Vespucci, mm -hmm. an Italian man who was the navigator for Christopher Columbus mm -hmm. before America was called, was surnamed because of the navigator mm -hmm. who thought they were all in India. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hence the name Indians. Indians yeah. So we have the Native Americans, but we don't say... Uh, 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 Italian American, we say it, but we don't call them that. And we've accepted as people of color that we are African American. Just acknowledge it. You are American. There's nothing to be ashamed about it. And every race of people in the United States of America need to accept and embrace the fact that even the us brown and black people are Americans. The uh, African Americans, and I know several, are the innate, are the original Africans, I'm talking about in your day, who have relocated to the United States, mm -hmm. who were not born in America, mm -hmm. who come to school in America, mm -hmm. who now live and work in America. Mm -hmm. They raise their children in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are the Af African Americans. Mm -hmm. But if you've been born and raised here and your family roots uh, are traced down to down south, American. You're American. Mm -hmm. Let's move on because listen, there's not a debate. Accept it. We are the whole purpose is to get other races to accept us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to keep living under these uh, names, these trends for names. No other nationality does it. True. Oh my God, I'm taking too long on this thing. Listen, you need to understand right now that that your heritage, your heritage as a black. Christian, your heritage is right here in the United States. Yes. Everyone you can trace back to are Americans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you will we will all love to trace back True. to to the original African True. from from whence our family hails from. True. But again, you have to make so many different side stops mm -hmm. because of the ills of slavery. Mm -hmm. Slavery didn't allow no one family to stay pure. True. Your heritage, my brother and sister, is right here in the United States. And those who tell us to go back to Africa, we cannot. Because if you went to Africa, and I'm, I'm one of those that have been, the Africans don't see us as African Americans. They see us as Americans. And they see themselves as Africans. Pastor, I told the congregation more than once, one of the greatest lessons I learned when we went, when we went to Africa is the fact that even though I, we are the same color, we are two different people. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I'm not denying African heritage at all, mm -hmm. but we are definitely two groups or two races of people mm -hmm. because the African is pure African. The black American tainted. is tainted. Mm-hmm. In more ways than one. Okay. <laughs> People died. All of those names you mentioned for black history and, and who sat on buses and who, people who were lynched and people who were killed, people who were kidnapped, people who were separated from families, people who were abused in slavery, et cetera, et cetera. People died to make it this way mm. that we will be Americans. Okay. You don't have the right to vote because you're African American. You have the right to vote because you're American. American. Good God That's Almighty. Good. Good. You don't have the right to live where you want to live because you're African American. Listen, <clears throat> systemic racism, I'm saying too much is running through my mm -hmm. spirit. Systemic racism already has stuff in place to keep you out of certain neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you have right and privilege because you are American. Good God mm -hmm. Almighty. Mm -hmm. Do we understand this? Are we learning something here? Pastor, no matter what the complexion of the black American, of the black people in America, I'm here to shout it from the mountaintops 
that we are a parade of every shade. All right. Hey, I need somebody need to shout right there. Yes, we are. We are a parade, and the America need to get on the side of the streets with their flags in their hands, eat their traditional hot dogs and popcorn, and watch the parade come down Main Street. That's good. That's the problem. You don't want us on Main Street too late. Too late. All right. We're, we're coming down Main Street. We are the parade of That's every good. shade, and your blackness. It's not for sale. That's good. Good That's God. Good. That's good. We need That's to good. close. That's only the first point, Pastor. America's greatest sin. Yeah, we need yeah, to. I don't know what I. Uh, we can't do it. I got to yeah. keep this rolling because we will be in a new month, and 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 I got other things to teach. My second point. My second point is live out your identity. Say it, Pastor Form. Live out your identity. Live out your identity. All right, Pastor, I want to direct our attention for this second point mm -hmm. to Jeremiah chapter 1. Mm -hmm. When you get a chance, read the 17th verse. But I want to start reading at verse 18. Okay. This is God speaking to a young Jeremiah yes. that he has called. Now, I am not saying that Jeremiah was African. Mm -hmm. But I need to read what God told Jeremiah and apply it yes. to our teaching and what we are bringing out and defining mm -hmm. for ourselves in this lesson. Mm -hmm. In verse 18, God tells Jeremiah, For behold, I have made you this day a defense city and an iron pillar, three a brazen, brazen walls. Mm -hmm. Good God. That, with, Pastor, when I read that, it just stayed with me. I couldn't even sleep last night. My, it just stayed in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I was so restless because when we see ourselves as brass, mm -hmm. good God, when we yes. see the, the value, the bronze value yes. that is within us yes. Yes. as an ethnic group of people mm -hmm. for the color that God intentionally and deliberately created us to yes, be, yes. then we can discover our purpose. Yes, yes. There's a reason why everything that we're a part of we take it to another level. Absolutely. It doesn't mean we're better than any other race. Mm -hmm. All of us are of one race, mm -hmm. the human race. Mm -hmm. But all of us have our roles and our purposes. Absolutely. All right? He says you are a defense city. You are uh, iron pillars. You are brazen walls against the whole land, against kings, against princes, against priests, against the people of the land. Mm -hmm. And when you break that down, Pastor, from kings... To religion, yes. to the everyday person of dealing with certain races have tried to keep the black person bound, down, and useless. Mm -hmm. God told Jeremiah, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. Mm -hmm. And he says the same thing to you today. So right now, regardless of your age, you are already who you were meant to be. So I'm going to close with this final point. The, f the first point was uh, America's greatest sin. The second point was live out your identity. And I know all of these were lessons by themselves. And the final point is the nations are waiting. The nations, plural, the nations are waiting for you. Jeremiah 1 and 5 in the latter portion. Jeremiah 1 and the fifth verse. And the latter portion of the fifth verse, God says, I have ordained you a prophet unto the nations, mm -hmm. a prophet unto the nations. And in verse 10, God says, see, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Be the you you were created to be. The nations are waiting for you. Stand up and speak up mm -hmm. because the nations mm -hmm. are waiting for you. Live for a cause and don't live just because. That's good. The nations are waiting for you. Blessings and peace be unto you, our brothers and sisters. And our prayer from Pastor Audrey and myself to you today is that you will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Until the next time, God bless you.